Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how I did this portrait of a cockapoo in pastels. Now the first thing as always I like to map in the eye. Now my first priority here is just to get the shape right and then you can see I'm starting to build up my lighter values, really focusing on where the main highlights are and then of course the pupil and any subtle shadows around that eye. So the shadows at the top of the eye and around the sides are going to help to build up that sphere shape. Now once I was happy with that, that's when I can start working on the fur. Now the fur for this sort of fur texture is quite complex, so the layering process here is really important. Now in all of my videos here on YouTube, I do focus and really emphasise the importance of getting a good base foundation before we start working on our details. Now this is especially the case when working on this sort of fur texture. With further overlaps in many different layers, here it's very easy to jump into those curls that are sitting on the very top, but that section of fur is actually what we need to be leaving until those last layers. Now before I can start working on those last layers, I need to get what is behind that element of the face in first. So in this situation, because the fur, the curls on the side of the cheek, the side of the face, were in front or on top of the ear, which is what I'm currently working on now, I had to make sure that that ear was completed before I could go in and add those final details to the side of the face. Now this is something that I talk a lot about in all of my tutorials here on YouTube and my in-depth real-time tutorials on Patreon. The importance of looking at that photograph and knowing what layer to work on first makes the process so much easier to tackle. Sometimes when we look at that photograph and we're hesitating, we're not quite sure what section of fur we should be drawing first, that can make us spend more time staring at that reference photo and usually becoming stressed and uptight because we don't know where we should be going forward. So by breaking it up into small sections and then the individual layers just as I am here, I find this is a much more easier way of tackling complex fur textures. Now I have a couple of full length tutorials on Patreon that focus on how to draw curly fur. So one is a white poodle and the other is a tan beige cockapoo. I'll have a photo here now in the corner so you can see what those portraits are. And if you would like to follow along to those real time tutorials on Patreon, then I'll link all of that in the description below. They are in real time, no sections sped up or cut out, and it's all with a voiceover while I'm drawing. So every single process, all of those important layers are explained thoroughly in that moment. Now, when I work on the rest of the face here, you can see again that once I've worked on the eye, I've got that complete, I can start feeling more comfortable to work on the rest of the face. Now this base layer here, look at how I'm hinting at my lights and my darks. I'm only focusing on the shapes that I can see, those highlights and shadows. I'm not wanting to draw in those details that I've already mentioned, we do want to save those till those last layers. But here it's all about reinforcing the shape of the face. Now in order to do that, the pencil technique is really important, and this is something I speak about in all tutorials, but I do have a video here on YouTube and it's my top tips for drawing realistic fur in pastels. I'll link that in the video description if it's of interest. And there I do really focus on pencil technique. Now the pencil technique I feel relies on three things. You've got the fur direction, fur thickness and fur length. The fur direction, it follows the underlying bone and muscular structure. So in this case here, when we're working on curly or wavy fur, although that fur is longer, it's got more of that freedom of movement to have more of that curvature and change of direction. But the base of those curls are going to still be determined by their position from the bone and muscular structure. So if we get those wrong, it can adjust what that face on that pet looks like. So this is why I really want to be making sure that I've got the fur direction accurate from those early layers. Now that is also why I hint at that at the base layer stage. By mapping in my lights and darks, I'm already studying that reference photo closely. I'm not putting in one solid colour and then trying to add in my highlights and shadows after. Now along with the fur direction, the placement of the highlights and shadows are also going to change what that face looks like. So the highlights and shadows, they do follow that same face and bone structure. So the, for instance, on the top of the eye, around the eye socket, you'll often quite have a shadow and highlight in more of a specific area, and that's gonna really show where the eye socket merges onto the rest of the skull. So the highlights and shadows here is another thing at this stage that I pay very close attention to. Now the other two things that I mentioned there were the importance of the fur length and fur thickness. 
Now this is determined by a couple of factors. So the length of the lead, how sharp that point is, how much pressure we're applying to the pencil, even how we're holding that pencil, all of these things come into play. Now for most of the time here, you can see that I'm working with fairly blunt pencils. And for this sort of fur texture, that usually works in our favor. The sharper the pencil, the more fine those details are typically going to be. Now for this sort of fur texture, there is a real balance. We do of course want those details, but the fur still also needs to remain soft looking, given that this is a cockapoo type breed. So usually for me, I like to work with a little bit more of a blunter pencil, but use the right technique and hold that pencil in the right way, using the correct amount of pressure to still get that fur looking realistic. I want to get that balance right between the amount of detail and the softness of those details as well. Now the length of that fur is determined by how long our pencil strokes are, so in some situations you may only need to keep that pencil in contact with your paper for a split second, others it might need to be a couple of seconds, it's all going to depend on that coat length. Now all of those things there, as I've said, they do come into play at the same time, so the pressure on the pencil, the way we're moving it, how we're holding it, all of those things are something that I find practice makes it easier. So the more you use your pastel pencils, you'll find that comes more naturally. But this is something that I do focus on in my real-time tutorials on Patreon, especially because now all of my tutorials are created with a voiceover while I'm drawing. So if I do end up moving my pencil, holding it in a specific way, because I need a specific sort of pencil technique, then that is all explained in that moment. I just find by adding that voiceover while I'm working, I'm able to include every single decision that I make, which can really help to get that layering process right. So I think the muzzle area here is one of the instances where we would feel overwhelmed. Now I feel personally that sometimes we can look at a reference photo and think that's going to be difficult. And having that mindset first can actually make the drawing process harder because we're already thinking that it's going to be difficult. Now we, that's just totally normal, I think that every artist goes through that. But when I do feel like that in my own work, what I'll do is I'll break it up into even smaller sections. So here, although I'm working on a little bit more of a larger base layer, when I come in with my pastel pencils and work on those details, I'm going to only focus on one or two square inches. You can see here that I almost break this area where I've worked on my base layer, I break that up into three chunks. So now I've worked on the very lower section, now I'm going to do the centre and then eventually I'll go to the top where the bridge of the nose is. By breaking it up like this, I can still enjoy the drawing process, I don't get overwhelmed by that and I'm able to then push through that portrait and I don't sit there staring at my reference photo thinking where do I start. Now I also know that if I work in individual layers, so if I was to do the base layer for the entire dog and then my next layer and so on, I feel that I skip out on important layers. Now on my other videos on YouTube, I speak about the importance of building up subtle layers and this is important with any fur texture. So once I've built in this base layer here, this entire ear, there is an awful lot of shapes, there's different lengths fur, the way that the fur is curling and overlapping, it was definitely one of those things where I wanted to break this up into each clump of fur if I could. So once I've then made sense of one section of fur, it might even just be one wavy curl. I can then map that in and then do the same for the bit next to it. Now here I'm mapping in my lights and my dark so that I can make sense of that one area. Now once I've got about a quarter of that ear drawn in, I'm now mentally feeling far better about completing the rest of it. So this is just something that I find works well for me, but of course if you do like working with individual layers, then that is absolutely fine. It just means if you do ever feel that you're getting a bit overwhelmed, then break that up and just try working on one section at a time. Now one thing I do want to quickly mention is I did do the base layer of this entire ear in one go. Now as you know from my other videos, if you watched many of my other tutorials, I very rarely do that. But in this situation, because the fur on the ear was quite a bit longer than anything else, I felt that I needed to have that ear base layer mapped in first, because one section of fur was always overlapping the next given how long that fur was. So if this was the ear of um, maybe a Labrador or something like that, I wouldn't necessarily work with one of my base layers from start to finish. I would have still broken that up maybe into smaller sections. Um, but because this fur was quite significantly longer and it 
does run the risk then of overlapping another section of that ear it felt for me at that moment to just work on that base layer and then break it up into small individual sections now something else that really did help drawing this fur texture with this amount of realism and fine details was the scale of the drawing so this was quite a large portrait it was 18 by 18 inches and it enabled me then to get this dog being far bigger than life size so I had plenty of space to add in all of those details that I could see in the reference photo. Now the other thing is I had a beautiful photograph to work from for this and that really does make a difference especially if you're working larger we have that room to add those details so having a good quality high resolution photo to work from means that we can see every single part of that detail all of the fur directional changes that's going to help with that three dimensional feel of that finished portrait. Now the last section of this was of course the chest the body area and this is where the main section of the fur texture completely changed so this is where the curls became really tight they were significantly shorter and really overlapped in different ways one curl might have been going down towards the lower left corner while others might have completely turned and gone towards the right hand side now what i feel is important with this is i think just working on one layer at a time and I know I've spoken about this throughout this video but this is definitely one of those times where if we start drawing in the lightest curls first this section of fur is going to look really quite flat so we need to be working on the softness the fur that's closest to the skin first and then building up from there now again you can see that I'm getting that base layer nice and smooth and soft looking before I add any of my curls I did use my pan pastels and a couple of soft pastel sticks for my base layer but after that I still use my pencils to get that base layer looking a little bit more accurate to what I can see in my reference photo. Now one of the questions that I'm often asked is how do you avoid filling the teeth of the paper when you use your pan pastels? Now this is a great question because I do feel that pan pastel pigments is quite a bit softer than anything else so I think that's why they're a bit easier to fill the teeth of the paper early on. Now a really good way of judging that is if you've got your initial sketch or your outline on your surface and you apply your pan pastels on the top, you should always be able to see those transfer lines through your pan pastel base layer. If you can't, that's a good indication that you've put too much pigment down early on and you're probably then going to really struggle to put your details on top. Now you can use a workable fixative if you have accidentally filled the tooth of the paper throughout that drawing process but I'll just be very careful about how you apply it because they can adjust the colour and tonal values of your artwork. So I personally for that reason don't like to use them and I won't use a final fixative at the end when the drawing is done. Instead I like to get a mount or a mat for that and then frame it behind glass. Once I've done that it's completely protected. So I really do hope that this video has been useful. If it was, I'd be very grateful if you could give it a like and a thumbs up because it makes a huge difference to my channel. The other thing I would just like to mention is I've just hit 10,000 subscribers on YouTube and I am so, so grateful. I wouldn't be able to make these tutorials if it wasn't for your incredible support. So I really do appreciate it so much. And if you are interested in any of my in-depth tutorials on Patreon, then as I've mentioned, I will link all of that in the description below. If you do have any art related questions feel free to pop them in the comments because I'm more than happy to help if I can and I do upload two to three videos to YouTube every week so if you would like to get notified of that content then don't forget to hit the subscribe and the bell button. As always thank you so much for watching and I'm going to be uploading another video in the next few days.